Before we get started with today's video, I have to let you know, we found a slight error in the month by month cutting instructions. So if you already have a full kit, there is a additional cutting instructions information page at the link below. You can get it right from Charisma's blog page. It's a very simple fix. And if you already have your fabrics with these slight adjustments, we'll just make a variation. You'll be no problem. Worst case scenario, you raced way far ahead and you didn't see this in time. Well, you can just do a little something to add for the binding because it's involving the black or the charcoal hash dot fabric. So it's a super simple fix. We are very fortunate for all of the customers out there that are participating and cutting along. And we all know that even with great pattern testing and great technical writing, there's a lot of different ways to interpret the cutting instructions. And Charisma and I missed one of the variables, but we've got a solution for all of you. With that said, let's get started with today's tutorial. That is right, everybody. Welcome back to another fabulous version of Making It Fun. I am your host, Rob Appel, and I'm super excited to welcome our special guest back, pattern partner extraordinaire and designer of this fabulous quilt project, Charisma Horton, everybody. Fabulous, darling, <laughs> fabulous. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh, this is exciting. Yes, it's very exciting because this month we are working on the Alex block, which Walk is the two. building block of our quilt here with fabulous block of the month. And so again, if you want to reference uh, some things, but we are, it's an eight series block of the month. We are in block two, the Alex block, and we are going to put some checkerboard half square triangles together. There are a total of 12 blocks this month. Four of them are the black and white checkerboard version and eight of them are this blue and colorful black and or half square triangle checkerboard version of the block. So you do need to pay attention again to color orientation because that's very important when we're putting this together. Super easy block. I made a couple samples. Uh, supplies wise today, you're gonna have strips. We're gonna start teaching you how to do strip set rows. So you're gonna have uh, different colors and we're gonna go through the orientation of this. You'll also have some tiny squares, uh, the blacks and the blues. And then you'll also have some of your larger squares that we've already started to cut down, the blues and the whites. This is all the Michael Miller Basics fabric. Uh, you're seeing hash dot right now on the camera and our wonderful cotton couture. So those are used throughout the project as yes, well. and cocoa. Ah, and why cocoa, Charisma? Because cocoa Chanel is classy and fabulous. <laughs> right? So, yes. Um, oh, and I, while Charisma's getting herself organized, I won't distract her as I often do. I do want to point out, remember, you need to purchase the pattern to get the size requirements, and you can get those from your local quilt shops, your online retailers. This is the beautiful pattern cover for Fabulous. And the fun thing is, if you're a kit kind of person and you want to get kits, the fabrics are provided in a lot of different varieties of ways. So you can get them once a month, you can get them all at once. And the thing that I like to point out is do take a moment and read the cutting instructions because Charisma put together some really great information to help you save fabric. Yes. And so here we are. We're going to start on our checkerboard uh, blocks and we need to get the strip sets going. And so we have the strip sets already cut. Rob did a great job of cutting them and sewing them together. Yay, Rob. Fabulous. And so we have... Um, the first one is just a single strip set, the green. And I was really accomplished when I got that strip set really done. <laughs> yes, that was really difficult, I'm sure. And so then we have strip set number two, which is just green and yellow. And then we have strip set three. They each build upon, right? You're seeing one, two, three, four, five. That's, you know, pretty much how it the whole thing is put together. So then we have strip set three, which is orange, yellow, and green. Then we have number four, which is you know, we add the red and then strip set number five adds the pink. So now we're going to start cutting those strip sets. Oh, let me interrupt you as well. Mm -hmm. Are you using these same, same strip sets for the white and the blue? Or do we need yes. to make new ones for the blue no, ones? No, absolutely. These strip sets cut for all 12 of the blocks. So Fantastic. that's very nice. When I sew my strip sets together and then when I press them, I press them you know, so that when we are sewing our checkerboards together, the seams will nestle. But Rob worked on these and he did not do that. So I will show you how to nestle them regardless. But 
the other thing that I would like to show you is that when I cut my strip sets, I like to fold them to cut two at a time because we have a lot to cut for 12 blocks. And I will fold them pretty sides in so we have less bulk when we are lining those up to cut them. So I'm just gonna fold these, make sure that everything lines up. Lines up. So now we have this pretty little strip set here and I'm just going to start cutting them for our checkerboard Alex block. Give you a little working space here. So she's really just lining up those seams first, making sure all of that stays nice and tidy. Throw and it on the floor. Throw it on the floor. And I'm just, it's <laughs> not second nature she to throw like things to on the floor. So now I'm going to cut my strip sets here. So they're all going to be subcut down into the same size and if you are new to the fabulous block of the month video, like I was stating earlier, the patterns are purchased to support the local quilt shops and charisma. So you have all the math and the sizes in here required. Nice thing is, is as we're subcutting through, all of these sizes stay the same. And if you follow me over here to the design wall, you can actually see the way these are breaking up. So that was the one, here's the two, the three. and so. One of the things we're not doing is we're not rushing right now because in order to make two cuts at once efficient and accurate, we're not going to travel at the caffeinated pace I normally travel at. We're going to make sure that we take our time. So we're going to blast through getting a bunch of these subcuts made. We'll be right back with all of our piles and parts and pieces and show you how the first half of this block comes together. Okay, can you trade me for a smaller ruler yep. please? Okay, what are you doing next now? Okay, so now that we have the strip sets done, we wanna cut our little uh, black squares in on the diagonal so that we have a bunch of half square triangles. Because how, I'm gonna interrupt you again, because I'm good at it. Uh, how many did you stack up there? Three. Do you have a rule of thumb? Like how many is too many? I think four is probably too many, but I'm just gonna go with three, but mm -hmm. just do whatever you're comfortable doing. So now what I'm going to do on this is because I just want to make sure that we get the orientation correct on all of these. I'm just going to lay them out so that we have them in order the way that we need them, right? Um, it'll just keep me in place as I'm... I'm double checking. Yes. This is not one of the ones you want to have to deal with later right, if you didn't no. get it right. Because the less you have to seam rip the better, right? So now we have all those in place. And now I'm just going to sew each of these triangles on top of my green square here. Now for the new quilters at home that might be watching right down here on the cutting board, it does look like the triangle is too large. I understand that. If you've never worked with a triangle and a square before, so while Charisma's getting set up, I'm just gonna take a moment and point out, you're gonna wanna line up your flat edge when you lay your right sides together like this. These corners over here and over here will technically be hanging over the seam allowances or hanging over the squares. If that's brand new to you, don't panic. It's supposed to look like that. And I'm just going to strip sew these. I was wondering if you were a chain piecer. Yes, I'm a chain piecer. Well, as we learn in the Eleanor block, that's sort of the whole thing with Eleanor's theory of chain piecing. And that's what I really loved is that we could get a lot done chain piecing. Yeah, and, or even think about it, if you would have made small squares out of all the colors and then had to reassemble it, that would have been much more time consuming and actually less accurate than sewing all of the long strips together and then sub cutting them down into these square pieces that have worked so nicely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when you are chain piecing, it's also kind of cool. I'm sorry, I want to teach and she's doing all the hard work, so I guess got to keep talking. But you'll notice that all the pieces are coming off the sewing machine in the exact same orientation as well. So that's giving us a visual check that these parts and pieces are coming together nicely. Okay, and now we have the last one. This is so exciting. We're going to start seeing this come together. Okay, so press away, press to the dark. I like to let my blocks just chill for a second, literally. Uh, if you've not heard me say it before, fabric has memory. So if you let it sit for a few seconds and cool back down, it won't be as likely to shift to the 
a less than tidy state it might have been in before. So I'm just going to lay these out the same exact way that we built them so that we can keep them in order as we're sewing them together and you can start to see how it's coming together. Yay! This is like so exciting. I love this rainbow of color. It just makes me happy. I was really excited to learn how to construct this block as well because I had not actually done something like this before and you made it so easy on us. It is very easy. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the smallest to the um, second one and two. We're going to take one and two. And I'm just going to lay these on there. And what I'm going to show you is how seams nestle. And so it actually, um, if we were to press them in op the strips in opposite ways, these seams sort of come together. But we're just going to go ahead and run it through our machine and just make sure that um, they are falling in opposite directions and we'll still be able to get that seam to match. Oh, so you're going to get a little physical encouragement on the way through. Absolutely. I see what you're saying. So I see what you're saying. Quilters are resourceful people. <laughs> we will figure it out no matter what. And while she's setting that up, I'll just show you the back of this square that I've created. And I ended up just laying them all in the same orientation. And what that has done is it made a pretty accurate match on the front, but it's made a bigger bulky spot on the back. So as a machine quilter, if I run my needle right into that, that might cause some problems, different machines and whatnot. But again, having your seams nest really helps with accuracy. So that's uh, something I wish that I would have thought through. Um, and I like the fact that Chris was teaching us all how to do it now and fix it when you don't make it through. That's great. Oh, that looks so good. It's so fabulous. It's very fabulous. So now we're going to do so section one and two to section three. Do you like to iron between or are you going to do it all at the end? I'm just going to do it all at the end because our um, seams do not um, overlap. So in this case, we can go ahead and just iron it all at the end because we're not sewing any unpressed seams, right? So it just oh, saves a sense. little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And as a mom of six, I've learned how to um, save time. The rumor that I'm always asked, or I guess the question I should say that I'm always asked is, does Charisma ever sleep? because she has over 200 patterns on her website that were all put up in the about with the last five or six or seven years. How long have you been designing patterns? Two years. Two years. I was trying to not make you all feel bad out there. <laughs> Two years, yes. So I've been a long arm quilter for quite some time, 10 or 11 years, actually. That's, I raised, uh, I was able to raise my kids and stay home being a long arm quilter. And Six I, children, by the way, but I, they're not all youngsters any longer. No. They're not underfoot, so that's why she's getting this quilting done in the last couple of years. I've been, I've been getting to know all about our family. We are having so much fun in this in the studio this week. And so we, so yes, we, and we have kids that are the same age. I'm just gonna adjust these as I go. Okay, Rob, it's time to press. Okay, any tricks for me on this one or just go for it? Nope, just go for it. Okay, here we We're go. Good. I'm gonna go uh, big end to the small end then, I think. Yep, that's right. Just give them a nice light press, letting my iron set the seam, then I roll it over. And it's so it's... beautiful. It really is a great block. And the triangles line up really, really clean as well. I think we've got one last one to put on, correct? Yes, we're gonna do the big white half square triangle. But first, oh. <laughs> we've got that little one I was hiding over here This too. happens to everybody, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna sew this last one on. I was so excited when I made my first sample, I almost went without it. I'm like, it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And I realized I was missing one whole triangle at the end. It was great. Sorry, Rob. Press again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure I got my job security over here. Yeah, that's know. right. Okay. Are we set? Yep, we're set. But I am just going to do that one little thing of trim those little dog ears because I we're sewing it onto a white triangle. I think it's not so pertinent, pertinent, important <laughs> when you are doing it with the blue because you can't see them. But with white, you just want to make sure that you don't have those little black triangles showing through. And so here we are, we have our black triangle, or our 
black points on our colorful triangle here, checkerboard triangle, and we're just going to line it up right on our white. Nice match. And I am going to sew on this side. And the reason I'm going to sew on this side is because I have um, a perfect opportunity to make sure I don't cut off any points because you can see here where the seams cross. Little and as there. long as you don't cross the corner of that seam, you won't cut off any points. So that's just a little trick. So even if you have to like go in on your um, quarter inch seam a couple of stitches, that's not going to hurt the integrity of the quilt and you won't miss your point. That's a really nice trick I learned in putting this together and helping get that accuracy um, on those little stitch points in the corners like that. I really, really like that one, Christmas. And again, you just want to adjust, make sure everything lines up. And here we are. I'm so excited to see the Alex block all unfolded and voila! Yay! Okay, Reb, time to press. I was getting so excited. I, I almost know. got us up. I almost burned you. Yeah. All... So I'm going to press into the triangle as well, though, yeah? Yeah, I would. Yeah, it's going to make it so much easier because all of those other seams against this one piece. And the Cotton Couture, even though it's our high-density solid from Michael Miller, it still isn't going to beat those seams at their game. So you want to take a nice moment. Let that set nice and flat. And here is one of the Alex blocks finished out in the black and white. And here is the blue. So you'll just want to make sure that you recognize that there's eight of these and four of these black and white ones with the colorful checkerboard. And the reason that it's so important to get the green uh, and the orientation of the triangles and everything just right is the way it locks it all back in together. So Chris would like to point that out as well. Yes. Yeah, so the black and white ones aren't pivotal. They do, they are very flashy and fabulous and they sparkle really great and they frame in this star. So that's, you know, a really spectacular part of the process. But these blue ones are very important. And they're very important because they sort of frame in our quilt right here, but they also interlock with these star blocks in the next row down, and they all form that chain that brings all of the blocks together. And so that's very important that we get those greens to line up because it is an important design element. And it's also the reason why we named this block the Alex block, because Alex Anderson is a very pivotal person in the quilting community and I just I'm like a little starstruck if you want to know the truth because yesterday I had mentioned oh why don't we put Alex Anderson on the quilt or why don't we make her an icon in our quilt and Rob says oh I'll just call her and we'll we'll just you know contact my friend Alex and we will ask her about this list of iconic quilters and I was like oh sure Rob we'll just call Alex Anderson I just have her on my speed dial and he's like I do and he calls her so my friend here he's like famous he knows he knows all the right people and you've heard the saying it's not what you know but who you know and I'm walking proof of that and, <laughs> and now I know him right and look, I, I'm like staying at his house like I can't believe this. <laughs> so yes, Alex Anderson uh, was my first quilt hero, um, not only because of the work she did on Simply Quilts back on PBS way back, and then she got partnered up with Ricky Timms, who's also a great friend of mine. Uh, but my very first quilt show, I was at International Quilt Market. I took a class. I actually won a prize, like to pull your business card out. And, and I got to shake Alex's hand, and she was then uh, uh, recommending and showing the book she had written about choosing fabric choices. And that's where I learned about scale and value value and variety and picking fabric choices to put together a quilt and give more variety. So yes, I did call Alex Anderson yesterday and Charisma and I had a pretty nice list going. We ran it by Alex Anderson. So over the next eight videos, if you find yourself on or off of the list, take it up with our friend That's Alex right. Anderson. <laughs> Your Alex
Alex approved. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And again, thank you to Alex Anderson and all of the iconic quilters out there that have paved the way so that folks like us can come along and have fun with all of you. And Charisma, thanks again for this fabulous block. Thank you, Rob. It's been such a pleasure being here and sharing this time with you and learning about even more iconic quilters and their stories and sharing this fabulous project. And if you would like to check out any of my patterns, you can go to charismascorner.com. And let's just say, have a fabulous month too. See you next time. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.